Hey guys, Advocore Cosplay here, and today we're going to be talking about character ownership. I will be talking about this through the lens of mainstream cosplay. Now you might be wondering, what is mainstream cosplay? Well basically, here I am referring to cosplays that are of characters who might be very popular, or from large IPs such as Marvel, DC, and Star Wars. This often culminates in the cosplay community having an abundance of these characters, such as Harley Quinn, Spider-Man, Jedi, you get the picture. Now today we are going to discuss how the community approaches some of these large scale characters while taking some time to appreciate those who cosplay from lesser known IPs. To start with, is cosplaying a mainstream character bad? Simple answer, absolutely not. If anything, it is extremely beneficial to the creative space. Sure, there are plenty of Spider-Men and women out there, but each one has a unique feel, personality, and individuality to it. I would say more often than not, multiple Spider cosplayers are extremely different, even if they are portraying the same iteration of the character. And this is what I appreciate so much about the abundance of these characters, is that no two are alike, which is quite ironic given that they all derive from the same source material. Story time. Before I made my version of Batman, I was good friends with another Batman cosplayer. He often wore the Arkham version of the suit and it was very well crafted. Just having joined the community though and making good friends with him, I wanted to put together a Nightwing to complement his Batman so that when we went to events together, neither of us would be left out of photos or conversations because we were wearing characters who were from different universes. During our time as friends, I did want to make a Batman. But I always felt that it was his character, in his cosplay, and I shouldn't step on his feet if two of us go to the same event. But after a bit of a falling out, I decided to make the costume anyways, and I started hearing from people that he was really pissed off that I would try and take his character from him, that I was being petty and not respecting that he was the Batman. I thought it was ridiculous, as I wasn't making it to spite him, I just really loved the character too. Now this isn't to put someone on blast, but I learned from this experience that you should honestly cosplay whomever you want to cosplay, regardless of whether you have a friend or 10 friends who wear the same character. If you think they might be sensitive to the issue and they might see it as you stepping into their territory, have a conversation with them. Don't ask them for permission, but tell them that you want to do this and that it isn't for petty reasons. And if they still have a problem with it, well then, in my opinion, they care more for themselves than you or the character. Because they are putting themselves and their own ego ahead of you, and the love of the craft. If they truly cared about the craft more than themselves, they would encourage you to make the costume and to make it yours. There is nothing wrong with you making your Harley Quinn and them making theirs. Heck, it would make for some funny and interesting photo ops, like OG Spider-Man meets Alt-Universe Spider-Man. They should look at it as a positive, not a negative. But unfortunately, when mainstream characters are so popular, there are going to be double ups, there are going to be duplicates, and there will be even more. This is why I always try to put my own edge and my own spin on costumes. If anything, it makes things less awkward, as I know no one else will have the same suit. So if I go to a convention, I don't avoid the Dark Knights because we're wearing the same thing. No. We have a conversation about the differences in our suits and the way we built them. It opens more social doors and more opportunities to make friends. Whereas two Men of Steel cosplayers might avoid each other, either to avoid an awkward situation, or because one might feel their suit is inadequate to the others. Fear of rejection and inadequacy are common in cosplay. People are putting themselves out there and almost making themselves vulnerable because like art, this is something that you made and you want to share it with others. But I would argue that people should be proud of their creations, regardless of what quality or skill level they have. This is what makes cult cosplay so interesting, and it brings me to my next point. What is cult cosplay, you might ask? I would define it as cosplay of characters from out of mainstream IPs. These are cosplayers who will make characters that they love purely because they love them. Now the same can be said for mainstream costumes. I genuinely like Batman but I am talking here specifically about franchises that aren't necessarily commonplace. An example of this is a Bionicle cosplay that I did a few years ago. Bionicle was a LEGO IP that existed from 2000 to 2010, nearly saved LEGO from bankruptcy, but it was based on the adventures of these mechanical beings who controlled the elements known as Toa. 
I made a cosplay of Lua Nuva, the Toa of Air, and there were others who similarly cosplay characters from this franchise as well. But given their scarcity and cult following, this is what I would define as a cult cosplay. Other instances could include any genre or platform. For example, Undertale as a game, whereas Waldo as a book, and to some extent, Power Rangers and Super Sentai as a TV show. Now, please don't diss me Power Rangers cosplayers. I do plan on making one in the future. It's this guy right here. Now, there may be many cosplayers from these franchises, but they don't hold nearly as much mainstream appeal as large IPs like Marvel, DC, or Disney. However, I feel this works extremely well for the subgroup, as there quite often isn't a motivation for widespread appeal, it is often simply the adoration for the character that spurs them to create it. A love for the series, or possibly like in my case, a chance to reminisce and enjoy sweet, sweet nostalgia, whilst reminding others of memories that they might have had. To conclude, mainstream cosplays have their place, just like cult cosplays. No individual owns any character or the exclusive rights to portray said character. If you have a friend that you are afraid would be upset with you cosplaying a character that they portray, then you need to have a conversation. And like I said, don't ask for permission, but explain why you want to cosplay them. And if they aren't okay with it, that's okay. They're just being selfish. You do you and put your spin on it. Make it your own and don't have regrets. Approach and learn from others. This is how we build a positive community that doesn't focus on ego and mainly focuses on the creation. Cult cosplay shows us that by putting aside ego and a desire to be recognized widely, it greatly enhances your happiness and helps remind others of things they may have forgotten and enjoy new franchises and IPs they may never have encountered. An amazing kids movie once summed up the good that cult cosplay can do. New legends awake, but old lessons must be remembered. This is the way of the Bionicle. Thanks again for listening, guys, and let me know your thoughts about mainstream and cult cosplay down below. As always, please like and subscribe for more cosplay videos, and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, it's pure imagination. <laughs>